Morning. Get your coffee. Pull up a chair. <laughs> this is ditty about women because I grew up around women. I had a mother who was more father than mother because she was raising her children, all four of us, basically on her own. Oh sure, she had help from her friends and there were different people in her life that influenced her family, being that she was not married to my sister's father and she wasn't married to my father. That kind of gives you the idea that, you know, I was raised in a broken home. No. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Let's be real. Most women know that they raise their family the best that they can. And that if there's a man present or if there's a man absent, they still raise the family. That's the point. The woman still has that communicative ability that God has given her to raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. So a lot of things that I learned, I learned from my mother. So I wanted to do a study that was specifically designed for women, about women, to women. Now, having said that, often, I used to go to a woman's study that was on Thursday mornings in Calvary, Costa Mesa. It was kind of not really called for women because Romaine taught it. But the only ones that were there were women. <laughs> All the men were off working somewhere. But boy, was it a good study. And I used to love it. So when my wife, recently I, I go out and I have this tendency to go out window shopping at uh, used stores, you know, and I take her along with me, and she doesn't get much time to shop, but, you know, she at least gets a chance to look, you know, grab if she can while I'm blitzing through the store. But the point being is that I always go through the Christian book section, you know, and if I see a devotional, I try to look and see if it's any good, you know, and then maybe pick it up for her, you know, because she really enjoys devotionals, but I've discovered that most of the devotionals that I've seen, unless they're some of the classics, were pretty fluff and stuff. You know, just kind of, eh, you know, I'm not really there. Well, as it turned out, I wound up picking her up one that was a, a one-year book of devotion for women on the go. And usually when I see something that says for women or for students or for adults or for men or for this or for that, they're usually just some writer's idea that just, you know, kind of slapped it together. And you can tell that it's just a fluff and go, you know, kind of more puff than stuff, you know, and I like to call them HR puff and stuff, you know, after the cartoons, because, you know, I know what that is, you know, it was kind of like fun to watch, but didn't really amount to much, and sometimes that's what devotionals are like, they sound good, they look good, but really a bunch of hot air, you know, kind of like what men do sometimes, you know, men love to pontificate, pontificate means to puff up and to make it sound important and to really get really, you know, kind of like ego in a way, you know, and while we do look good when we're strutting our stuff, sometimes, really, our strut is more than our stuff. Because the reality is, in the morning, you're still leaving clothes all over the bed, you know, or all over the living room, or all over the house, you know, and still forgetting to put the toilet seat down and not doing the work that maybe we should be doing to inspire women and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends to be more, to do more, not laying down our lives. So I kind of like the idea of this women's study because I picked up the book, you know, my wife immediately, you know, latched onto it when I put it in the bathroom because she's doing her morning constitutional. So having a constitutional, she gets to constituate with God, you know, to reconstitute her spirit, so to speak, and to put it together in right relationship with the Lord. Because that's kind of what you do is you take the opportunities that are made available to you and you use them. I mean, when you're putting on makeup, you don't have time. You're too busy putting on makeup. When you are getting dressed, you don't have time because you're too busy picking out which goes together, you know. And I watch my wife. I know what, what I'm talking about, you know. I've seen women do that, you know. It takes them time. So one of the best places to make time is in the restroom. <laughs> so that's where my wife reads these. So praise the Lord. I wanted to use these as the foundation for video women so women could take it and make it as though it were makeup to put on for the Lord 
the glorious image that they are being created into by God from the inside to the outside, causing them to reflect the glory of the day that God has given them to become women of God. Read Psalm 51, 1-4. Watch me clean from my guilt and purify me from my sin, from Psalm 51, 2. Crystal clear. One day I pulled a crystal glass out of my dishwasher and went to fill it with water. I was so thirsty I had been exercising and my throat was dry. I filled it to the brim with crystal clear drinking water from the refrigerator and lifted it to my lips. Just as I was about to take a big refreshing gulp, I spotted food particles crusted on the inside of the glass. I tossed the water down and I tossed the water down the drain and went for a clean glass. I had just been reading 2 Timothy in my quiet time, and I immediately remembered this passage. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a utensil God can use for this purpose. Your life will be clean, and you will be ready for the Master's use for every good work. 2 Timothy 2.21 I thought long and hard about that glass. Now, years later, when I am tempted to sin, and I want to harbor it, you know, keep it the sin secret or justify it, I remember that glass. Sin is like that. Jesus was so serious about dealing with sin that he said that if part of your body causes us to sin, we should cut it off or gouge it out. A part of our body gone is better than going to hell. Matthew 5, 29-30. Sin makes us dirty. And Jesus calls us to get rid of it in no uncertain terms. If I drink from a glass with debris in it, I am repulsed sick to my stomach. So I ask myself, when I see sin in myself, do I feel the same way? I'm not trying to live in condemnation, but rather I want to clean the glass and become beautiful crystal again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's say that again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, it's easy to ask for forgiveness, but it's quite another thing to be cleansed from unrighteousness because that takes away the guilt stain that we have that we feel like we need to blame or we feel the blame of Satan himself who causes us to be accused before the Father night and day, and yet Jesus intercedes on our behalf. Because of the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross, God himself has said, Hey, when I clean, cleanse you, I remember your sin no more, as though you had never committed it. You might remember it, but I will cleanse even your memory from that stain, that particle that seems to have clutched itself to your life. I will remove it and make you clear and pure and holy in my sight. God is like that. God is your Father. God is the one who has caused you to be forgiven, to have a means to get clean and cleansed up. God is the one who's able to scrub the particles of old dead skin off your face and body and give you the freshness and the newness of new skin that has been rejuvenated by God himself. So from the inside out, God is working to make you the woman of God that he wants you to be. He's making you into the creation that he made and formed with his own hands. And that's what his plan is for you today. To form you with his own hands into the gorgeous, beautiful woman of God that you are. Because he's already seen you as perfect in his sight.